Hello all, welcome back to Current Affairs Headless Series. I'm Guna Madhivanan from Offices IAS Academy. Friends, I'm coming up with an exclusive Current Affairs program targeting 2024 prelims as well as mains. So classes starts from 21st October. I have given the information here. If you're interested, you can go through and call to the number given here. All right. So today's topic is India's space policy. Friends, if you take ISRO, it is the world's sixth largest space agency. If you take Indian space sector, we are known for our success rate and we are known for our cost effectiveness. In a cost effective manner, we have exceptional success rate with respect to our space programs. However, if you take the global space economy, this global space economy is worth $500 billion and it is increasing year after year. What is our country's share in the space economy? It is hovering around 2%. What is the reason despite of the success rate, despite of the cost effectiveness, why we are not able to have a bigger share in the space economy? The reason is the space sector activities are majority carried out by ISRO or even we can say close to 100% is taken care by ISRO. We do not see private participation. The private participation, unlike US, we would have heard about SpaceX, a private company which has its own launch pad, which is launching uh, satellites, which has their own launch vehicles, rockets, reusable rockets. So private participation in US space economy is significant. So in India, the space activities are predominantly carried out by ISRO. So we need private participation in this space sector. So we need some regulator to facilitate the and authorize the private participation. So keeping this in mind, recently the government has come up with India's space policy. So this policy outlines the roles and responsibilities of various space agencies in India like ISRO, in space, NSIL, New Space India Limited, Department of Space. What is their role? What is their responsibilities? How these agencies can streamline the private participation in the Indian space sector that is being outlined in this space policy. All right. So we will try to understand the role of the individual space agencies, which is outlined in this policy. So starting with starting with we have uh, in space we have in space indian national space promotion and authorization center indian national space promotion and authorization center that is referred as in space so in space is an organization the role and responsibility will be to act like a facilitator to act like a facilitator as well as regulator and also it will give single window clearances for the private projects in space sector so it will also authorize it will also authorize the private space programs Right, it will act like a facilitator. What it facilitates? ISRO, Indian Space Research Organization, has has a lot of infrastructure, has a lot of data. They have a lot of experience, right? So this in space will facilitate the you know uh, the sharing of infrastructure data from ISRO to private player without any bias. So Guna wants to set up, uh, uh, let's say I want to come up with my uh, own rockets, I want to launch satellites, I want to participate. ISRO has a rich experience, they have a lot of data, lot of infrastructure on a small charge, right? This in space will facilitate the usage of those ISRAs, ISRO's infrastructure by the private players. Okay, so today we have many uh, startups. For example, we have a startup called the Skyroot. They have recently launched uh, their uh, rocket successfully. They have named the rocket as Vikram. Right. So this 
in space what they will do they will facilitate then sky route will be facilitated to make use of the isro's resources infrastructure data on a small charge so they will be a facilitator and they will also regulate the activities with respect to the space programs made by private players they will be the regulator they will also authorize any private space program they will be the authorizer single window clearance will be coming from this in space organization now if you take isro if all these are done by uh, private players then what isro will do today isro is focusing on the launch vehicles isro is focusing on putting satellites in space all those private players can do private players can have their rockets they can launch the satellites in space the policy expects isro not to focus on these launching services this launching services is something like taxi service if guna wants to go from one place to another i take a taxi the taxi is the rocket isro what isro does they are providing taxi service they are developing launch vehicle rockets and the rockets will carry the satellites if the satellites will be put in space why the taxi service should be given by isro let the taxi service be done by private players let isro focus only on research let isro focus only on research let isro focus on outer space exploration let isro focus on demonstrating human space program let isro share the resources to the private players let private players take care of all those launching services etc let isro focus only on research right this policy says isro you please focus on research build the private players capacity so that they are able to provide all those services right and we have another agency called as nsil new space india limited this new space india limited uh, will be the commercial arm will be the commercial arm of isro see using government's money using the public expenditure isro has built a lot of space infrastructure right isro has come up with various space programs let us commercially exploit that let us commercially exploit that this nsil will be acting as the commercial arm of isro to commercially exploit the space assets built by isro through public expenditure in simple terms i'll explain in simple terms i'll explain see today isro is developing the rockets isro through this rockets they are putting the satellites in space not just indian satellites in space isro they are successful in developing rockets they are successful in launching rockets they are successful in putting the satellites in space using rockets so isro apart from putting in our country satellite they will also put other country satellite for money for example let's say france is developing a satellite the france will give that satellite to isro isro will take that satellite through our launch vehicle that is the rockets and isro will put that uh, satellite in space for that service france will give money to isro this is called as commercial exploitation of the space assets are you able to understand It's very simple you go to a bus stand in the bus stand there will be buses waiting to go for a particular destination okay so like that our rockets are waiting to go for different destinations this rocket is going for low earth orbit this rocket is going for middle earth orbit this rocket is going for geosynchronous orbit different different location it goes now what nsil will do they will market it they will speak to france germany they will say see we are sending rocket to low earth orbit if you want to put your satellite come to us we will put your satellite successfully in space for a particular amount for a particular price right very simple so in nsil will be the commercial arm of isro they will try to make benefits out of the space assets built through public expenditure and also this nsil will work alongside with the in space will work alongside with the in space for bringing the private players to bring the private players to uh, develop certain space products to manufacture certain space products which is helping both isro as well as private players so nsil will be the commercial arm of isro they will try to commercially make benefit out of the space assets built by the public expenditure and also they will rope in private industries 
for manufacturing products machines required for space programs that also they will do right then finally we have the department of space so what is the role of department of space it is the nodal agency for implementing this policy it is the nodal agency for implementing this policy and this department of space will be coordinating and cooperating with international space agencies to ensure a proper global space governance so they will coordinate interact cooperate with international space agencies to ensure a proper space governance while doing that they will also consult ministry of external affairs right and this department of space will also have a dispute uh, uh, redressal mechanism so if there is any dispute related to space activity emerges they will have a resolution mechanism through which they will try to solve those disputes these are the four major space agencies what is their roles and responsibilities has been outlined by our space policy and the space policy is also allowing the private players to come and participate end to end in the space activities so private players now they can come they can set up their launch stations they can have their own rockets they can put satellites in space what isro does they can also do that is being facilitated through this space policy so that currently we have just 2% share in the space economy we want to increase it to 10% right for which these roles and responsibilities has to be properly defined so that private contributions is also getting increased clear so here i have given the information whatever we have discussed related to space policy you can pause the video and you can go through you can make small notes okay about in space about uh, isro about the new space india limited about the department of space and uh, other key features i have given here go through based on our discussion have given a multiple choice question find out the right answer and give it in the comment section i hope the video was useful i'll meet you tomorrow in another important interesting current affairs atlas topic till then bye take care